Hey, what's up everyone? My name is Donovan and today I want to talk about this device right here that I've been using over the last two weeks. This is the Moto E5 Plus, also known as the Moto E5 Supra, as you can see here for Cricut Wireless. So a little confusion there, the Moto E5 Plus and the Moto E5 Supra are literally the exact same phone. For some reason or another, uh, Cricut Wireless or Motorola uh, decided to use the Supra name on the Cricut version of the device. So here it is, Moto E5 Plus, same phone. Um, and today, is actually launch day if you are on T-Mobile. So today's July 27th. It's launch day for this device on T-Mobile. It's available right now for $225 and I believe it's $9 of monthly installments if you want to pay for it that way. So today I want to talk about my experience of using this device over the last couple of weeks because it's been out for Cricut Wireless for about maybe three weeks now. I picked it up about a week after launch and uh, so far my experience has been pretty good. But let's go ahead and talk about that here in a moment. So here we go. Uh, so a few things to mention here as far as some specs. So we have a six inch HD plus display. Basically what that means is we have a 720p display that has been stretched out. So this is an 18 by nine aspect ratio phone. We have a 12 megapixel camera on the rear, eight megapixel front facing camera. Both have a flash, as it says here, so you can see that flash up there on the front. We have a fingerprint reader. Now, one thing I will mention that I'm maybe not a huge fan of is the fact that the fingerprint sensor is on the back, um, which I don't mind. I actually like that. Um, but we have this gigantic chin here on the bottom, so it has the Motorola branding, um, but a pretty giant chin. Uh, so you would expect that there would be a fingerprint sensor there, but there isn't. Um, and then we have that long lasting 5,000 milliamp hour battery. And I think honestly, that's probably the main reason why most people will be looking at this device is because of that uh, gigantic battery that it has. So 5,000 milliamp hour battery. And I will say that in terms of the heft of the phone, you can definitely feel that it is definitely heavier than your average phone. So this is my LG V35 Thin Q. Um, and this has a 6.2 inch display versus the six inch display on this device. Um, so this one just has a little bit of a wider display as you can see here. And uh, yeah, so overall, uh, this one is definitely a much heavier phone and that's because of that battery, that 5,000 milliampere battery you have in here. And we'll talk about the battery life here in just a moment, but let's go ahead now and talk about the build quality of this phone. So obviously you can see that on the back we have what looks kind of like glass, but it's definitely plastic. Um, and then we have our fingerprint sensor. We have our 12 megapixel camera. There are some sensors in there with our dual flash down here on the bottom. This is probably a negative. Let's get it over there. Micro USB. We have a microphone down here on the bottom. So no type C on the this phone so that's a little bit of a negative for me I wish it did have that we do have a headphone jack though so that's great another microphone up here and then uh, probably my one of my biggest complaints in terms of design is the way that the power and volume rocker are working so uh, the main reason I say that is because I feel like with this being such a tall phone so let's just do another comparison this is the v35 thin Q you can see that this is a pretty tall phone, so when you throw a case on it, it makes it even taller. So I'm gonna go ahead and just throw the case on it now. And uh, yeah, it's just, it, the volume rocker is a little too high for me um, because it, you just get, it's easy to confuse it. I wish the volume rocker was over here. If it was over here, that would have been a much better design choice in my opinion. Uh, but obviously after some usage, you'll totally get used to it. Just something to keep in mind in terms of the design. There's our eight megapixel camera up front, our speaker, also of course our earpiece, and then our front facing flash as well. So overall design wise, um, I think it's good. A uh, couple of flaws in my opinion is that chin and of course that volume rocker, but overall definitely a nice design to this device. All right, so now let's go ahead and talk about the performance of this device. So this is rocking the Snapdragon 435 processor. That's an octa-core processor. And you can see here the Geekbench score that I ran on the first day that I got the device. So you can see here a single core score of 642, multi-core score of 2342. Now, just as a quick comparison, this is of course the Moto E5 Plus. Here is the Moto G6. Now you can see here, this one's running the Snapdragon 450 processor, and you can see that the multi-core score is a little bit better. So this has three gigs of RAM. This also has three gigs of RAM. And I'm gonna bring in one more phone over here. This is what a flagship phone looks like in terms of Geekbench scores. So this is the LG V35 Thin Q. You can see nearly double the Geekbench score, and obviously the single core score is significantly faster. Now this is the 
uh, rocking the 85 or 845 processor from Snapdragon. So um, what does that mean in day-to-day -day usage? Well, I'll be honest with you, for the average consumer, for the average user, um, I think anything over 2000 really is decent. Um, you can run games on this phone. So one of my favorite games that I've been playing, and honestly, I've been playing the crap out of this game is a Star Wars Force Arena. Um, it runs this game really well. It's a pretty graphic intensive game, um, but it does it really fantastically. Um, and overall, I would say performance is quite good. Now, obviously there is a difference. The Moto G6 um, is definitely a snappier phone when you use it from day to day. Now it only has three gigs of RAM, so you're not gonna notice a difference there. Um, and obviously, even faster with the V35 Thin Q. But overall, I think for the average user, uh, this phone is gonna be just fine. You will notice lag every once in a while, especially if you're using uh, a bunch of different apps in the background. So again, this is three gigs of RAM. You can see I already cleared them all out. Um, but in general, performance has been good. Games run quite well. Uh, social media apps, you will get lag from time to time. Like Facebook Messenger is kind of a heavier app. So if you're using that a lot, um, it will, you know, just kind of have some slight delays, but overall, um, I think performance of the Snapdragon 435 processor is quite good. And uh, for the price point, I think that's a good processor to be using. All right, so now let's go ahead and talk about the software on the Moto E5 Plus. And you can see here that I'm running Android 8.0 with the April security patch. So relatively up-to-date, pretty much uh, the most up-to-date uh, from the time that I actually purchased the device. Uh, so with that being said, a couple of things uh, that I really like. Obviously, great thing about Motorola phones is the fact that basically they're running stock Android with just all the right tweaks to them. So that is where you find them is in this Moto app where you have Moto Actions and Moto display. Um, but one thing I will point out, and this is true of Motorola in the last couple of years, is they have been very slow to update their software. So if you're expecting software updates, I don't necessarily recommend Motorola phones as of late. Now, a couple other things worth mentioning here is the fact that you are going to be missing a few features that you can get from Moto. So notice that on the Moto E5 Plus, you don't have the Moto Key and you don't have Moto Voice, which is available on the Moto G6. So just something to keep in mind. Um, you will be missing a few features, but the Moto Actions is really probably the one that I think most people uh, like anyways. So we got that three finger screenshot. You can see I'm not using that one. We got Chop Toys for flashlight. So I'll go ahead and point that out. So that works well. Um, we have our twist for quick capture. So if I twist my wrist, you can see it's going to go right into camera. Um, but all of those moto actions are available here. And uh, that is great. So uh, again, Motorola for me has some of the best software out there. The unfortunate thing is that they just don't do a very good job of updating their software over time. All right, so now let's go ahead and talk about the cameras on this device. So again, we have a 12 megapixel camera here on the rear and on the front, we have that eight megapixel selfie camera. Both have a flash, as you can see here. So we have that dual flash on the back, a single flash on the front for those low light selfies. Now, in terms of the actual camera app itself, I will say that it's kind of limited in terms of the features you get. Um, we do have HDR. We do also have the option to change it to auto or manual settings. So if you want to use manual settings, that is an option. But I think at this price point, the average user is probably just using auto mode. So we'll kind of just stick to that for the rest of this review. Now, so I'm gonna go ahead and jump into our menu settings. You can see that there's a pretty limited number of settings you can get here. So we have photo mode, there's panorama, and that's pretty much it. And then for video mode, you get slow motion. Now I will say for uh, video, also we do have the option of having anti-shake. So basically that's just going to stabilize your photos um, or video as you're holding it. So if you're walking around, it does do some electronic image stabilization. So that's nice that that is a feature available on this phone. Now I'll kind of let you be the judge for yourself. Um, are these great cameras? No. Are they good enough cameras? Definitely, I think for the average user, the cameras will do just fine, um, but there's certainly nothing amazing and, and definitely will not compete with something like this device and certainly missing some features that you get with the dual cameras on the G6. But overall, I think for this price point, the cameras are pretty decent.
You're cute. All right, so now it's time to talk about one of the biggest selling points of this device, and that is that internal 5,000 milliamp hour battery. Now I say it's internal because it is non-removable, so just something to keep in mind. And again, this is using micro USB for charging it. However, it does come with a turbo charger, so you will get that fast charging on this device, so that's good. Um, now in terms of actual battery life, in my day-to-day -day usage, here's what I'll say. If you're using the phone as a pretty much a normal user would use a device, so that's, you know, you're using it for social media, maybe the occasional gaming, taking some pictures, things like that. Um, in general, I'm getting about eight to 10 hours of screen on time, which is to say that you can easily get through a day with no problem, probably in a lot of cases, a day and a half, or even two days if you're kind of doing light usage. However, the way I've been using it, um, my son and I have been playing the crap out of this game, Star Wars Force Arena, ton of fun. With that, uh, because it's such a graphic intensive game, also it uses a lot of data to play the game, um, that gives us about five to six hours of screen on time. So obviously, depending on your usage, you can definitely get through two full days, but the way we've been using it, basically one day, um, because of playing that game so much but overall battery life obviously with that 5000 milliamp hour battery is going to be very good and i think for the average user a day and a half to two days is definitely feasible all right so now let's go ahead and talk about the speaker on this device so we have a front firing speaker not a bottom firing speaker on this phone and it comes from that earpiece and honestly it sounds quite good in my opinion and gets quite loud so again another thumbs up for motorola for continuing that now dual speakers would obviously be a better option especially when you have that gigantic chin why not throw in an extra speaker down there but let's go ahead and take a listen to it and see what you think All right, so now it's time for me to share some conclusions on the Moto E5 Plus or the Moto E5 Supra. And uh, let's go ahead and start with this. Obviously, the two biggest selling points for this device are that very large display, that six inch display at 720p, and also that 5,000 milliamp hour battery. So great battery life. If those two things are something you're looking for, a large screen and a large battery, then this could obviously be the phone for you. Outside of those things, this is a pretty, uh, budget-friendly phone and so you should expect some mostly budget-friendly specs so the cameras are good the performance is good but not great and uh, overall I think that I'm gonna bring this one in here the Moto G6 this one is $234 unlocked on Amazon I think honestly for me personally this is obviously just a personal preference um, this one's probably the better deal um, or better phone if you can get this one for $119 on Cricut Wireless, if you pour it in, that's a steal. And then it makes it definitely a better deal than this one. But if you get it on T-Mobile for $225, you might as well go for the unlocked Moto G6, in my opinion, for $10 more, uh, you get a little bit more of a device. This one comes with NFC, comes with Type-C, um, and just about everything that you get on here, you have here, so that large screen, it's maybe not quite as big, but it's still a very big, uh, big screen um, but then you don't get the battery life so obviously the battery life on this one is going to be better um, but in general the moto g6 for me is just the more complete mid-range phone whereas the moto e5 plus has two good things the screen and the large battery but outside of that it's pretty mediocre in most ways so moto e5 plus great phone especially if you can pick it up on cricut wireless um, but other than that, I hope this video has been helpful for you. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave them down in the comment section. Thanks for watching, and I will see you all in the next video. Peace.